Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special emergency brief edition of Doctor Who Reviews. This is not a podcast, it's just like a, a quick update video, because something momentous happened on Friday. The new showrunner was announced. And the new showrunner is an old showrunner, because it's Russell T. Davies. Interesting uh, choice. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's Russell T. Davies. This, this news caught me so off guard. I think this news caught everyone off guard. Like, I was on vacation. I had Wi-Fi. I'm just browsing through Twitter here, and all of a sudden, what? Is this a shit post? What is it? There was Wait no... a minute. That's the official account. What? There was absolutely no <laughs> indication of this being in the works, because there was talks about uh, brand new showrunners, um, Sally Wainwright, the writer of Last Tango in Halifax, among other things, was tipped to be the, the next showrunner. And that hasn't happened. Obviously. We've gone from um, Russell C. Davis light to Russell C. Davis. <laughs> now, I'm conflicted about this. On the one hand, it feels like it's either the horrible conclusion to that trend I've been picking at from Series 12, or just fucking shrugging your hands and trying to one-up it. As I've said, uh, I'm sorry, hang on, children. Uh, live on the podcast, uh, my Steam has dinged. Concave Usurper has sent you a gift. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna click that live on okay. the show. <laughs> old, old, have fun. Old, I'm, I'm screen capping this. What is it? What's the game that she's picked? Eschato Wonder Pack, a bunch of shmups that I had in my wish list. Oh, we both got your shmups! <laughs> Well, I mean, I put shmups on my list, on my Steam list. I know, because oh. the thing I was going to get you, I, I couldn't get because it's not out yet, so. I'm just going to, I'm just going to save this. So and good God, try, spare me trying to buy you Steam games digitally. That's never going to happen. <laughs> oh, 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 well, you managed to buy me a Hellsinker. That's yeah. a Steam game. Yeah, yeah, I, I said Switch games. <laughs> you said Steam games. Did I? We're keeping this in. I meant to say Switch games, but we'll keep that in. But, um... Oh, so, yeah. yeah. By the way, Fred is old. Yeah. yeah in case I was about to say, that. he's the, the birthday boy. Oh, Isn't no, this a I'm fantastic old. birthday gift? You get to have more Russell T. Davies. I mean, that is a pretty well, good gift. I guess, but... And if Rainier gets gift. to have his way, more Murray Gold. I, I hope so, because here's what's happened. He's coming back for the 60th anniversary for sure. And the press release says, and beyond. Mm. So oh. is, is that going to be like multiple series? Is that going to be like one series to stay at the ship before a new person comes in? We don't know. So to finish my thought before uh, I got my train of thought derailed by generosity. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> uh, I'm conflicted because on the one hand, this either is a... Uh, it's either... The ultimate follow through, the final horrific consequence of the Chibnall era's trend of nostalgia at large, or a rejection of it in some way. Like it's either, oh, we, we, we really want you to remember the Russell T. Davies era so much that here he is, he's back, it's 2007 again, please love us, or is it literally like, oh, what, Chibnall, you want to just rehash the past? Fucking, we don't need you for that. We'll just slap Russell T. Davies back in there. That's fine. I Who think... needs the watered down bullshit when you can get the real thing? I think this is a move to stop the show from being cancelled because it's not just the fact that he's yeah. going to be writing um, the, be the head showrunner, but the production is also moving to Bad Wolf. Bad Wolf will co-produce Doctor Who. Me. So it's moving, it's staying in Cardiff, I, I believe, because Bad Wolf's based in Cardiff. So, uh. So, you, you know what we need from you now, Frez? We need a Doctor Who conspiracy alert. Doctor Who conspiracy alert. Yes. Because what if they planned for Chris Chimnall's era to be bad? No, <laughs> no. Specifically no, so no. they could get back Russell T. Davies <laughs> and hype up the whole Tenth Doctor thing. I'm not bringing oh, up the Pepper no. Sylvia Bull with the Ouija. I mean, Charlie Day. <laughs> I'm still mad about that, but whatever. <laughs> the memes have been worth it. <laughs> I'll say that much. 
I, I burst out You have a voice actor for Mario right there. Right there. And you can't use the, a hit, but Chris freaking Pratt. The goddamn meme <laughs> image with Chris Pratt for Yoshi's. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, the Russell, the Russell T. Davies era, too. I, I mean, on the one hand, there are, there is the horrific implication that this is an attempt to fully invoca- invoke fucking 2007 again. And, you know, the worst, your mind reels with the possibilities. Oh, no! Jody, Jody unregenerates into David Tennant. Please love us again. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen either. I, would... I mean, there, happens... are, there are plenty of, shall we say, traditional fans who think that might happen or they might go to a more traditional doctor again. And you might be disappointed if you think that because um, Russell T. Davis is not the same writer he was back in 2005, people. Uh, yeah, this is a yeah. th- this is the glimmer of hope that Russell T. Davies has actually grown and changed as a creative person, as a writer, as creative people are off to do. I'm not the same writer I was in 2008, and neither is Russell T. Davies, as you can see from his output. He's done shows like uh, Years and Years, It's a Sin. Years and years and years are, are, the, are the two big things that I think he'll he'll be drawing off if they if they go that way. So I would expect to see more representation, if not not less. Yeah, I mean he's not well. Yeah, for the people, for the uh, shall we say, uh, I I don't have a good word for them, but the NMD crowd, who are like, this is a victory, ha ha, Chibnall era. Oh, the misogynists. Yeah. The, yeah, those people. That's the word uh, you're looking for. They're going to be fucking disappointed because, I mean... Not my Russell soggy T. knees, oh no! Russell T. Davies is, you know, a big gay Welshman. That's a fantastic Good. description of him. <laughs> so, like... And, I mean, you might have ignored the politics in his Doctor Who before. I mean, it may be hard to notice that, say, aliens politics in London... Politics the Doctor Who? No. It may, it may be hard to notice that po- aliens in London World War Three is a big fucking send-up to the Iraq War because he disguised it with a bunch of farting aliens that everyone was like... Oh, I was going to say, can we, can we not pretend for one second that he was not political in his writing? He, he was less overtly political than some... But he's still political in some of his writing. I mean, you know how much I like political Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, I know how much you like political Doctor Who. I don't know how much other people despise it. Yeah, so this is not a win for the bigots just because we're going back to Russell T. Davies. It's not, we're not rewinding the clock. Oh, thank God. Oh, it's all, oh, the Moffat era and all was all a dream. It's 2008 again. Ooh, no, you're not getting that shit. You're also, getting... I hate to tell you guys, but Russell T. Davies can also write a woman doctor, just saying. Yeah. It, it, it could still be a thing. I'm, I would like I'm it. Now I would thinking like the person to write a woman who was, was rumored to be the doctor is still going to be the doctor, because presumably Davies gets the call here. So just checking, he's officially writing the 60th anniversary. Oh, yeah, right? he's, the, he's the head writer. So he gets okay, to write just the making anniversary. Sure, because that would be really interesting to see if he changes anything about the 13th doctor. I mean, I just want, and here's a point that someone made when I was linking just a uh, snark on Twitter. It's I, I was mentioning how uh, we know about this. Two years down the line, we know about this shit and how, what's coming. We know more about that than we know about the series that's coming out in a fucking yeah. month. Yeah, this, it's been terribly uh, marketed. It's coming out in a month? Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's. I mean, we're resorting to people having to look through fucking listings to theorize when it's coming it's out, listed as instead autumn. of the goddamn showrunner actually fucking advertising. It's listed as autumn slash fall twenty twenty one, and we're running out of autumn slash fall. This so. is this is beyond spoiler phobic. This is. I don't know what the fuck it is. Okay, BBC. When we said you, we wanted you to stop spoiling shit. We did not mean we wanted you to stop announcing the show. I linked There's this a to a friend thing. of mine. Yeah, I linked this to a friend of mine, and I mentioned, you know, it's a month away. We still don't know shit about shit. They revealed they revealed more about this era's succession than they have Jody's own goddamn final shows. Yeah, and, and Jody and will not friend... be part of the 60th anniversary, by the way, Cat. Oh. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, Jody's not part of the 60th anniversary because she's leaving for the 100th anniversary of the BBC, not the this show. Is next... 
That's next I'm sorry, year. What? Jody's leaving next then year. Who the heck is going to be in the 60s? Oh, God. The new Doctor. The, the new Doctor. Again. It's going to be the 10th Doctor again, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Jody just takes off a mask. And, Surprise, it's me all along, <laughs> David Tennant. Yeah, anyway, yeah, my friend just said that's pretty frustrating. Like, are they trying to sweep the current series under the rug in favor of, hey, remember that old showrunner? Which. You can't help but, in all the excitement, you can't help but feel that. I'm in two minds about this. On the one hand, Russell T. Davis is great. And it's going to be great that the show may have some stability and some consistency again. Yeah. Under his stewardship. I think what I said uh, when it happened was, I think you mentioned something about how this is a move for stability. It's very much and... a move for stability, yes. <laughs> So in, in, in the worst case scenario, it's sacrificing innovation and freshness for that stability in bringing back an old showrunner. But Not also, necessarily. But, Not but, necessarily. Also, but also the current era kind of is lacking both. So you might as well put in one. Yeah, but it, it also feels like a backwards move. Yeah, like it's hard. People are excited for it. And, Certainly, I'm willing to give Russell T. Davis a chance and hope that he's learned and grown as a writer. I don't think he's the kind of writer who, like uh, the BBC or Chibnall or whatnot, wants yeah. to throw you back to 2008 when the Tenth Doctor and all that shit. I think he wants. I think he wouldn't have taken the job if he, his job was just do what you did 12 years ago again to pander to people. I think I lean towards the happier side of this than the not happy side. At the same time, you know, I, I would have wanted someone new and interesting. Like, and this isn't just an RTD thing. I would not want Moffat to come back either, if we're being honest. Yeah. Uh, the but, major side effect is you've killed all hype for Series 13 and next year Stone Dead. Yeah. They're not even trying to build that hype. They're just like, hey, be quiet. Be quiet. The spoilers please, come out. please don't hate us. We brought back Russell T. Davies. Please. And it's so don't strange because on the same day that they announced Russell T. Davies was coming back, they did. They finished off the um, the the Doctor ARG game. Oh, the, is it Find the Doctor? Was it? I don't know. And they think that they included a, a very brief appearance of the next enemy that's going to be in the in series thirteen. It wow, could, it could I be the swarm. so much right now. It could be the swarm, and uh, yeah, but four hours after that came out, Russell T. Davis is here to uh, completely dump on, on the hype for series thirteen. <laughs> well, hang on, I've got to find that. Uh, I've got to find that one quote from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because that feels, yeah. <clears throat> so it feels like, and I'm going to quote from Hitchhiker's Guide. It feels like. News about Series 13 is on display in the bottom of a locked filing cabinet stuck in a disused laboratory with a sign on the door saying, Beware of a Leopard. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, that seems to be how they're treating it. And Mike was also getting very excited because he said, Oh, and Moffat's back as a writer. What? I can't find, I mean, I can't find mm -hmm. any official information about this. Mm -hmm. He says it's in the mean... press release. Hang on a minute. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know how I feel about this old stuff. I mean, Moffat had his run. Six seasons we got out of Moffat. Six wonderful, great seasons that I loved. What I wanted a Doctor Who was something new. I don't want it to pander to me. I'd want something fresh, something new. Maybe Russell T. Davies can do that a second go. Yeah. Maybe he can't, and I'll complain about it in two years' time. <laughs> oh, we'll find something to complain about. Don't worry. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, if it's the same, if it's just, if it's the same shit again, it's going to be very like. Yeah. I'm I'm going to say something that might be controversial, not to an mm. extremist extent, but something that might be a little bit controversial, and it's going to blow you guys' minds. Oh boy. Russell T. Davies is okay, but I actually prefer Moffat as a writer. That doesn't blow my mind <laughs> at all, because people, people, quite a lot of people prefer Moffat. But wow, would, Kat, that's the second great birthday gift you gave me. He would never... <laughs> what, controversy? <laughs> no, saying Moffat was good! <laughs> Happy birthday, here's an argument waiting to happen. 
happy birthday. No argument here, Matt. The reason rules. I'm saying this is obviously he's changed now, and we're not going to, you know, really know how he's going to write the doctor as they are going to be just yet. Because Russell T. Davies is, is, you know, he's grown, he's learned things, he's done things. He's he's more than likely going to be different from his 2008 stuff. I can't find... Yeah. Uh, 2008 any... stuff was really dark for me. Like, the whole 10th Doctor series just felt really grimy in a way. If that like, makes uh, sense. I think 2008 Midnight? was was his best solo script was Midnight, yeah. Midnight is, in, like, it is the scariest... I think it's the scariest Doctor Who episode, but also... It's really nihilistic and bleak, isn't it? It's a brilliantly told story as well. It, it, oh yeah, it, kind it of, is. It kind of feels like that went over, like the, that nihilist sort of went over the entire series of the Tenth Doctor. There was oh, always yeah. this looming, like dread in the background. Yeah, and I mean, it continued the entire time. That's why they loved Doctor was such a great fresh, you know, like a breath of fresh air. Because, you know, he was happy and it felt like the entire thing was lifted. Yeah, like the tonal shift from end of time to from I don't want to go to, oh, legs, I've got legs, arms and hands, yeah. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. That's tonal that. whiplash, that's not just tonal shift. That, that's oh, yeah, kind well, of why I'm not a huge fan of Eccleston. Um, not because mm. of him, he's fantastic. You know, mm. obviously. Um, but just because everything was so dark feeling. And it's like, you know, we can make a joke, ha ha, it was the early 2000s, they had bad film quality, ha ha ha. It's nothing to do with that, it's just the tone and feel of everything. Yeah. I like I like the way that, you know, the love of Dr. Onwards has felt more light and airy and a little less bleak, if that makes I mean, sense. Look at, and look at, and I'm sorry to bring it up again, Love and Monsters. I mean, <laughs> that's... That's the whole thing of that scene. It's like dark. It's dark, but trying to be hopeful at the same time. But it's yeah. it's not. It's just terrible and dark. Yeah. Also, yeah, can, yeah. can you say that title again? Oh, you want me to say the title again? Why? Do, yeah. Why would you want me to? Say, okay. Love and monsters. There we go. Much better. Yes. But yeah, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. There, there was some, there are some hopeful aspects to the Doctor in the Russell T. Davies era, but there's also an inherent darkness to it as well. I see what you mean. And it really, yeah. ramped up. It, it, especially in the Donna season, there was a lot of nihilism. Midnight, I mean, the, the Donna season went end. straight into a into a um, a whole mini arc of um, I'm gonna die. Pompeii. Yeah. Pompeii. Yeah. Pompeii was pretty fucked up. Mm -hmm. Turn left. Fucking turn left. Yeah, yeah. Waters of Mars, that's dark as hell. It's like, don't get me wrong, I love a lot of the stories that were, you know, written during that time. You know, the ones you've mentioned, the ones we haven't mentioned. There are fantastic stories during that time. However, there also comes to a point where you don't want dark and gritty and noir style stuff anymore. You want the happy go lucky. Hey, we're just going to go and see, you know, Robin Hood or something. And I don't that's, even like that episode. We have and that's the judge. beauty of <laughs> Yeah, go up. <laughs> that's the beauty of Doctor Who is that it's such a versatile show. It can go anywhere and do anything. So, you have these disparate eras of the show that you can go to. So, if you do want that darker, grittier take, on the Doctor, you can watch the Tenth Doctor here and enjoy it. If you want something yeah. a bit more lighthearted, you you can go to Eleventh Doctor. If you want some, uh, if you want if you want monsters, you've got classic stuff with Second Doctor or other classic Who. If you want the Gonzo stories, they're out there in spades. Take your pick of like half of classic Doctor Who reviews. If you want Ace, you are correct, and you should be watching her right now. What are you doing? <laughs> Well, they're listening to our podcast. They sh they should definitely watch an ace story after they finish. This is true, and then you can watch the review on that ace story. Because <laughs> I think we've only covered like we haven't covered like two ace stories, and that's about it. Well, 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 we'll, we'll get to them one day. Yeah, Dragonfire, yeah, Remembrance, Gra uh, Galaxy, or Greatest Show, um, Happiness Patrol, and Battlefield. Happiness, Happiness Patrol. Patrol, Battlefield, and Survival. 
Those are the only... No, no, no. No, we, no, did, we did have this patrol. We did have this patrol. Silver Nemesis, Silver Nemesis. Battlefield, Silver Nemesis. and Survival. Those are the oh, only Curse, three of, uh, Curse of Fenric. We've done we that one, that. too. And you've you've just given you basically just provided him oh, everyone. Oh, Ghost Light, we did that one too. I think we've done most of Ace's he, run. Actually. The ones he's mentioned are the only ones we haven't done. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I was mentioning the ones we have done. So this is a uh, the thing with Doctor Who. It can be so many things depending on who's writing it. I mean, under Chibnall, God knows what it is right now. It's a uh, hey a mess. Kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's not great, but it has its moments of brilliance, like. Uh, you know, there, are, there are, I can count on a hand good Chibnall episodes. Not written by Chibnall mind, but I can count I mean, on a hand. I mean, you only good need like, like what two fingers, but you know, <laughs> two fingers. Oh, which two, cat? <laughs> well, Rose is number one because obviously Rose is fantastic. It's uncomfortable, but it's fantastic, and it should be uncomfortable. I mean, and then second, the... I would say Demons of the Punjab. I would, I would say Demons of the Punjab, and it takes you away. So your favorite Chris Stapleton stories are the ones he hasn't written. Yes. That says it all, that really. Works. That says it all, I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, the one Chibnall story I really vibed with was Spyfall Part 1, and then Spyfall Part 2 happened, and oopsie doopsie! That reveal in Spyfall Part 1 is masterful. And I don't mean, I mean that's a pun, it both is. You, ah, hit the rim shot, cat. <laughs> but it is, pun aside, it is a stroke of genius. But here, it is. The, it is. It's point. really Doctor good. Who, Doctor Who can do all these things and more. It can be anything you want it to be. So, so good. I don't believe Christian Mel wrote it. So why in the name of God would you want to regress it back? I mean, that's that's the fear with Russell T. Davies. Like, you look at Doctor Who and all the things and you think, you, I would like it to be exactly like 12 years ago. I think it'll be kind of interesting to see where exactly he goes with it. Um, either he might go back to the gritty, dark, noir stuff, or he might try to continue on with the light theme. Either way, I think it might work. If only because, and here's your favorite word, the Chibnall era kind of mirrors the original Russell T. Davies era. If only I because... Mean... Russell T. Davies' era was, you know, that gritty dark that we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. Chibnall's era is almost too clean, too clinical. It's too there, if that makes sense. No, it's like, you know, the uh, constant invocation of 2007 that, that took place in series 12. Not, not even that. It's like, we're going, to, we're going to forget all of that, because technically that's happening outside of the show. I'm talking about the show itself, where... Uh I'm going to get a little bit possibly controversial here, and I apologize for this, Rain. You're probably going to get yelled at. I don't know. There is such a thing as being too inclusive. And when I say that, I mean specifically, hey, let's insert a gay person here just because we can. That's not how you should be writing characters who are LGBT and beyond. You should be writing them as if they have a, you know, a specific purpose within the show. It's not, they're not just there to be like, look, we have the very first gay person in this Disney movie. Instead, it should be like, we have Carl here. Oh, and Carl happens to like dudes. Sure. Okay. I mean, I, I will get yelled at by some people for that, but I shouldn't be because you're right. <laughs> and it's like... I I, I get it. You you want to be more inclusive. You want to show people that you are an ally. You shouldn't have to show people that you're an ally. You should just be like, hey, here's a dude and he's pregnant. Okay, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need to focus on him. Well, he, can be, he can be an added element to the whole thing because that had that adds a little bit of, you know, like, hey, there's this, you know, person here. They're pregnant. Oh no, they're in danger. That's all you need. You don't need to add on to the the whole thing with, I don't know if I want to keep it. Oh, now that I've seen him, I want to keep him. Oh, and God. It's like, okay, well, whatever. Re representation, yes, of course that's important, but meaningful representation, that's the thing. Yes. yes. And also, I mean, look at half of, like, the... Half of like the LGBT representation in the Chibnall era has been characters who have gotten killed. Like, look at Resolution, where that yes. one guard is like, "Hi, I'm gay." Oh. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I'm getting yeah. at. Like, it, it, it's like you shouldn't 
do that. They are real people. Treat them like real people. I if mean, you're going to include an we... LGBT character, it should not be just tick a box. How do we feel about the uh, two, the gay couple in Praxis again? See, they were actually good because they didn't, you know, shove it in your face. Look, they're gay. They're that's, gay. That's meaningful right. representation right. right there. They they had a point also, to play in yeah. the story. Yeah. So they've done good representation. And also, you know, the the fact that the guy in Praxis is being saved at the end and not another barrier gay situation, that the yeah. fact that that was just, is is really sobering in some ways. Like, oh, oh shit. The to the token minority actually lived. How about that? It's like in Hollywood where they'll be like, hey, we want to have this person be trans. Who should we have play them? Let's have somebody who was born female. Yeah. What? Hire a trans person. Don't mention that they're trans. Just hire a trans person. Yes. There, there are tons of trans actors and actresses out there who would be fantastic in these sorts of roles. And people would be able to discover that they're trans rather than it being thrown in their face. And that's how you do inclusive. Like, I'm not saying literally bury them by not having them in the story. I'm saying you don't have to shove it in our face that you're being inclusive because that makes you less inclusive. I can't believe I'm about to praise one of my least favorite um, Stephen Moffat era episodes. Oh? But, oh. um... Under the Lake and Before the Flood actually has a really good example of this. Oh, in, the, the, deaf, the deaf lady? The deaf lady. The deaf... Yes. I mean, the deaf lady also had that whole weird super vibration sensing Yeah, thing. But... Yeah, but see, that's fine, because that could be something that is possible. It's a story about ghosts. It's a story about atmosphere. It's mm -hmm. a story about not making a sound. That makes perfect sense to have a deaf person in there to add to the... Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. And she also played it really, really well. And she is deaf. Yeah. It wasn't the it wasn't the person that can hear taking a role of a deaf person. Okay, so well so we'll give we'll give I mean hang that. on, Chibnall era, we had a a blind actress who fit into the role very well. Was she actually was blind or, or was she actually blind or I'm pretty wasn't she actually blind? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. So. It's only Woolworth. Wait, I don't think she's blind. Wait, what episode was this? It takes you away. Oh. oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I have to actually look because I, I really don't remember if she was actually blind or not. If she was, then fair enough. I didn't think she was. Oh, Woolworth. Oh. I think Russell T. Davies will be good about this, is the takeaway we're having. Yeah. Yeah, she was born blind. She was okay. born blind, okay. Yeah. All right, so it's had good representation here and there, the Chimner, but you're right, you're right. Definitely should be... It's one of those things where you should write a character and be able to write them as gay without it being something that you need to announce. Why can't they just be, you know, existing, like most people are? Yeah, and, and it's certain like, uh, fictions are really good at this. Like, particularly written fiction has become really good at this, mm. where they have a lot of representation, but it's not there just to tick a box. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, it's a detective who happens to have a have a partner who's a man. But you don't recognize, you, you know, their main trait is not, I'm a gay detective. It's that I'm a really good detective. And I have, like, I drink coffee. I've got, like, these episodes. Oh, and I also happen to be gay. That's that's it. That's it, surely. Yeah. Have more to the character than just, I'm gay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Netflix and their um, originals is a really good example of this. Because they are, you know, huge on just shoving gay people into uh, something in order to make, you know, tick that box. And it's so annoying every single time. It's like, just because you're straight doesn't mean that you can't write good gay representation. You're just so focused on ticking that box that you ignore the fact that you're writing people. You're just writing people. Yeah. Write a person. One more thing about... Write a, uh, write a person, not a demographic. Just to get away from this uh, this topic before it gets really... Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, f I kind of forgot how we got on Worrying. this. Worrying. Uh, oh, I remember now. Um, but the the whole reason that I wanted to say all this is not to go on that huge rant, but it it was in fact to say that there co the reason that I'm not a huge fr or part of the reason I'm not a huge fan of Chris Chimnall's era is because it's too clinical. It it feels more like he's just ticking boxes rather than wanting a good story. It, yeah. It, again, if that if that hopefully that makes sense to you, but it's like we want to have a a cool twist. Tick. We want to have a gay person in it. Tick. We want to have the doctor having a little oh that's brilliant moment. Tick. At times it, it has it, felt like Doctor Who by the numbers, hasn't it? Yeah. It's too clinical, it's too clean, there's no character to it. And I think that's the part that really hurts, is that we've always had a little bit of each writer's, you know, personality in it. You know, we had the dark and grittiness of the Russell T. Davies era. And then we had the sort of uplifting, fun, you know, optimism of the Moffat era. And now we just have... The doctor's there. The doctor goes to a place. The doctor meets people. It's, it's just very paint by numbers. It's kind of falling into the same intrinsic trap that, uh, I'm sorry, Kat, uh, that the Colin Baker era fell into, where the people behind it are like, it's more Doctor Who! And that's no, I, the I selling point. Agree. I completely the, agree with you. That's the failing. We haven't done the Ultimate Foe podcast yet, but that's the ultimate failing of the Colin Baker era. It's like, there's no real hook. They're just like, hey, look, guys, it's more Doctor Who. It's the thing you like, and there's more of it. Like, Doctor in Distress, the, the fucking song. That's literally the point of the song. They're, uh, they're pleading to bring back Doctor Who because it is more Doctor Who, and we are Doctor Who fans who like the Doctor Who. And then here's an entire season that is nothing but us laughing at the fact that you don't like our Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Do we yeah, think yeah. that Mike's theory that Chibnall being asked to do something to do with him not working with Big Finish uh, enough has any merit? I, I, do, I doubt it. I don't think it, Big it could be possible. Story. It's like I'm, I'm hesitant to say that yes, that's the reason. If only just because while Big Finish is a big part of the Doctor Who universe, especially since now they add all this really great stuff to it, um, there's still the fact that they're technically a side thing. Like, I don't, I don't know if Moffat had any active tactile engagement with the Big Finish stuff when he was on the show. Like, since then, we've had stuff like uh, the Missy box sets, which, uh, listen to the Missy box sets, they're very fun. Oh, they're great. I, I listen Anything to... Anything to do with Missy is Man, fun. Missy and the, the Marcus could be fun. so good. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> Why I am I a brain them. in a jar now? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, the monks are brain in a jar. <laughs> I don't know how that, I don't know how that happened, but I, I love I love the Rufus Hound monk in those audios. He's so fun. And that's not a spoiler because it's literally in the audio trailer for that box set. So, well, we'll have I'll have we'll have to see. But yeah, the Missy audios are are very fun. But yeah, the point is I don't remember Moffat actively engaging with Big Finish all that much. I, I think the point he is he didn't actively engage with them, but he also didn't try to don't you know, try to actively stop working with them like apparently Chibnall did. Mm. Like he refused them to allow to new certain characters and, and, and properties. Uh, but they're not his characters and properties. This also does mean, by the way, that when Chibnall leaves, we could get 40, uh, Roof Doctor audios. Yes. I mean, I would I would, I would, would also, if, if she wants to do it, Whitaker audios would be nice, you know? Yeah. It would give her the chance to... Uh, it would, even more Colin Baker parallel, you know? Where Colin Baker... Yeah. Had to, had a unfortunate era, but his big finish output made people go, "Oh, this is a good doctor." Oh, I shit. think we we may get Whitaker audios eventually. I think what's more likely is we'll get uh, impersonator thirteen audios for a while. Kind of like how we have eleven and twelve. Yeah, maybe right maybe now. Deborah Stevenson because she did her voice for that um, big all the doctors thing. Yeah. For the anniversary. Like, I, can, I can see that going, or hell. Maybe you could pull page from the Companion Chronicles, where it's just companions 
narrating story. Well, they've, they've used Mandy, Jacob get Dugman. Get Mandy Gill in there. They, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've used Jacob get, Dugman for um, for 11 and, and uh, a little bit of 12, and then they, they recast the 12 actor. I can't remember who it is. Um, they've got the war doctor, a younger war doctor, Jonathan Carley, who sounds like a, a very young John Hurt, so it's perfect casting. Good. They could do that. But uh, yeah, I don't think that was the major factor in him going. I, We won't know. The truth is we won't know why Ch- Chibnall left, how Chibnall left, until after it happens. Probably years after the fact. Was it? A, was All it, I'm saying is Chibnall's leaving. Yay! Was he... Was he uh, ousted by the BBC? Did he go because it, it was really was his plan to leave after three series and take Jodie with him? We won't know. And we won't know how maker. Russell T's uh, second era is going to go until we get some details on it. I mean, you say it might be dark and gritty again. We don't know until the, the next Doctor is cast. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I'm saying, like, it's one of those things where you kind of are a little apprehensive because it's somebody returning. But also you have to have a little bit of hope because it's someone who actually knows the doctor and knows how to write the doctor. All I want Unlike is something, some people. All I want is something new. Give me something fresh. I consider For, this a uh, sideways uh, move, but it's a very good sideways move. Don't it, give us David Tennant 2.0. It, it's a move that arguably will set innovation for stability, but that doesn't mean we can't have any innovation. It might also bring back some people that fell off the show when Chibnall took over. Yeah. And whatever you think of that, you know, it's good that the show gets ratings. It's good that the show gets viewers. Because that keeps it on the air. Yeah. And it keeps us in a podcast for a bit longer. For a bit longer, yeah. Well, it's okay. Once we are uh, completely finished with Doctor Who and we don't have anything else to do and, until we wait for new episodes, we can always do a Simpic Gear podcast. <laughs> don't we already do a Simpic Gear podcast? Yeah, but that's more of an overview rather than a detailed talking about the I mean, uh, you're welcome to a Simpic Gear podcast, mm-hmm. but I don't be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're already, Rain, you're already three seasons in. You're in too deep. I'm going to watch yeah. it. I'm going to watch the last two seasons, but... True to form, I still have not watched the last couple of episodes of season three because I, I, I might actually quit. Don't quit. Don't. I have rain, watched rain. them. I have watched Reass- them. Reassure her. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't quit. Okay, the I'll end- think about the ending, it. The ending is good. I'll think about it. And now I've stuck my head on the, over the power pit and get taken off by a cannonball. Thanks for that, Jerry. <laughs> You're welcome. That's my. That's another birthday gift for me. So, can we uh, wrap this up? Final thoughts. Your birthday can I have gift. A cannonball sound effect. Your your birthday gift is throwing a friend under the bus. Thanks. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Final thoughts. I as I say, it's too early to judge if this is a good or a bad thing. My gut tells me it'll be mostly good, depending on who comes after him and how long he's in the role. Mm-hmm. So, it'll... I, I also want to say this also depends on why he's coming back. I think it's the 60th anniversary. <laughs> No, I, I mean more than that. If he's going to do stuff beyond the 60th anniversary, it's like, why has he come back? Has he come back because he genuinely loves a show and wants to do more? Or is he coming back because someone got on their knees and said, please, please save us? I mean, the, the timing of this announcement is very strange because it wasn't done at, at the Comic-Con. It wasn't done but when the show came back to air. It was on a, a random was, Friday. Yeah. So I, I I can only think that something fell through and then they thought, we've got to announce something now. So go with the backup plan of Russell. As I say, speculation it, it, only. It, it feels weird to me. It feels like very, very weird to me. It also could be, you know, the whole stability thing. Like, uh, he's coming back because if he doesn't come back then the show is going to go, and he doesn't want to see the show that he's kickstarted. I think that's it. I so, really do think that's so, it. So, yeah. so he'll I be mean, like, okay, I'll, 
come back for a series or two just to just to sort of clean house and get everything ready for a new fresh voice to come in. Ah, uh, man. Ah. Uh. I, I can't believe I've missed out on the 13th era. I mean, I started Doctor Who up again, and I loved Moffat's run. He had his, you know, his bad points, but you know what? It was fine. It's time to start watching the 13th Doctor, and then he just starts going through it. It's like, and then he picks up his phone. Hey, um, hey, BBC, um, I'm coming back, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm hesitant but hopeful that Davies will give some originality and stability to this and that he won't just David Tennant 2, it's 2008 all over again. I don't think he'll do that. Yeah, yeah, I let's hope he does. doesn't do that. I don't think he'll do that either, but, you know, the temptation could be there. Yeah. Because it, it, that, would, that would make a lot of ratings. For the BBC, you know, it's David Tennant. It's the most popular doctor, and he's back. Yeah, when, when I said well, you know ratings were good, I didn't mean for David question. Tennant. Here's a good question: Would it actually improve ratings? I, I don't know. So. It's like obviously we have those people who are the diehard, the tenth Doctor is the best Doctor people, but a lot of that was also people who really like David Tennant. Yeah. So can can we honestly say that bringing back Russell T Davies is going to bring back the show? You can't say because nothing is for certain these days. But exactly, um, I exactly. Think... Plus, we know that there's a ton of people who came in on like the eleventh Doctor, the twelfth Doctor's run, and they're not going to really, you know, like maybe they didn't watch the tenth Doctor, or maybe they watched the tenth Doctor and didn't like it. I mean, and also think of, you know, the younger audience who were born when David Tennant was the doctor and yeah. us don't have any, like, they're not going to be watching the show that you got to do your homework for. Like, oh, yeah. look at that. It's a doctor who, who was on the screen before I was born and I had to give a shit about that. Who's interested yeah, in it's that like, I, I probably would have never gotten into Classic Who if it wasn't for you two. True. Yeah. Whether you're cursing us or praising us for that depends on the episode, I'm guessing, but... Uh, yeah, it varies. It varies. Although half the time it's my own fault, so, you know, it's not that bad. I've just also realized I was talking about this, because we, we didn't do this with any kind of script, couldn't you tell? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just realized that um, we are only a few weeks away before we have to suspend the classic Who and do Series 13. And we don't even know when that's going to be because Chris Chibnall won't tell us. I mean, it could be literally that the week that it's announced, we go, right, we've got to go, we've got to, go to Series 13, guys. Yeah. <laughs> One of us could pick a story and then go, oh, no, we have to put that on the back burner for six weeks because this has come out now. It's like, it's November 3rd. We're just all having fun. Uh, Chris Chibnall happens to pass somebody in a Tesco and says, oh, by the way, Season 13 is coming out on this date. <laughs> in a Tesco. Let's go. Other other um, name brand, you know, uh, supermarkets are available, but Tesco's. Was I just like that. I just love that you went to the effort to go to the UK supermarket. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. I was thinking ASDA, but then I thought, no, he probably makes too much money to shop at ASDA. <laughs> uh, no comment. So. Good night, Raniac. Good night, Radio. So that has been us talking for far too long about uh, Rusty Davis' return to the show. And we will return to your regular schedule podcast later on this week, probably Wednesday, possibly Thursday, because it's not going to be too long for me to edit this because it's only like two episodes of the serial. And then a big you discussion. You say that, yeah. but I have the fucking backstory. A big discussion about um, the backstory and the trail as a whole, gosh. and also Sinfer Gear. Oh, no, we can't do Sinfer Gear because Kat's not watched it yet. Never mind. Well, <laughs> oh. I have a day. We can't do it yet because Cast not watched it yet. <laughs> well, technically, I have two days. Cat, give me a respite. Good. Give me some respite. <laughs> no respite. Only Simpha gear. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, you can find us at um, Reviews Doctor on Twitter. You can find us individually 
at Congrave Usurper, at Renate Domaniac, and at Freezing Inferno. Or it should be at Birthday Boy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> that has to be a Twitter account somewhere in the land, surely. Absolutely has to be. At Birthday Boy and at Birthday Girl. Uh, and we'll see you uh, probably uh, Wednesday, possibly Thursday, as we look at the ultimate foe. We'll probably do a lot of screaming. Until then, bye for now.